There aren't really many grapplers in Soul Calibur 6, but Astroff's probably the closest equivalent. However, Astroff's playstyle is he heavily based around keep out because, well, he's got a giant axe. For instance, you can use a move like back back A, like from around like mid range. This is a good horizontal, so a track in mid strike right here. You can even charge it up by holding down the A, and then you get a good guard break move. Other pokes you can use can include just simply pressing B, A, forward A, which ends up pulling the opponent in if you connect it on counter hit. Uh, with the A, you can also do A, B right here, get a little follow up. At a bit more range, you can control space with moves such as up back hold B, which is the same as down back hold B, and it does have a follow up in uh, down back hold B. Um, K, and, but generally just do just the B option. Look what range it has. The K option is just to make sure that they actually pay attention to it. Uh, let's see, that's the mid option. As a low option, you got one MGs that goes really far. This is your tracking low sweep. You can even hold it down right here. And let's see. Oh, if let's say you knock down the opponent with anything, then you can end up using back back B. And this move right here. You see right here, you can use this just on the opponent's wake up, so it's like it's like a strong mid option. You can even threaten them with the unblockable, and of course, being, a, being an unblockable, you can cancel it. But this is just a good move to kind of like just threaten the opponent on wake up, along with, a, well, of course, a back hold B. All right, let me just state right now that Astrof is a slow character, so that means that you're not going to be counter poking opponents with them. So, all right, you see this right here? This is your guard button. This is your G. So you're going to have to get acquainted with this if you want to play Astaroth. So essentially what you're going to do is you're unfortunately going to have to block something that uh, well, hopefully leaves your opponent negative. And if they think they can mash buttons because low Astaroth, in that case, smack them with your D with your forward kick right here. And then after you, if you connect this on counter hit because, well, they're mashing, then you could dash in and do like a down forward A plus G throw and just pick them back up and reset them. If your opponent likes to mash highs against you, then smack him with their bull rush, your forward forward K. You can even hold it and get a big launch. Greetings. I'm Force of Nature, and I welcome you to Top Tier Tips. In this session, we're going to be taking a look at the big green machine, Astaroth. If you have any difficulty with any of the terminology in this video, then be sure to check out this video here to help shed some light on the nature of fighting game notation. Because from here on out, I'm just going to be using proper Soul Calibur notation. Although Astaroth's playstyle is not 100% grappler, if you're coming from other fighting games where you normally play big grappler characters, then you'll probably like Astaroth anyway because he has a crap ton of throws. For instance, Astaroth has his A plus G throw, deals a solid 55 damage, creates a little bit of space. He has his back A plus G throw, where he just sits on his opponent, deals 50 damage, leaves him fairly close by. And of course he has side throws, like here's his right side throw. Solid 67 damage, keeps the opponent close by. Left side throw. Deals solid 65 damage, creates a bit of space as you launch the opponent away. And now his behind throw. Deals a very dangerous 75 damage. And those are just his normal throws. Astroff also has a huge plethora of command throws. The inputs, well, basically the animation will kind of look like that where he has a bigger throw like this. Like for instance, he has command throws like 614. This right here is your your reset command throw, which ends up doing 46 damage, ends up leaving the opponent um, well close by. After you end up doing this, the opponent's gonna like push any buttons and just smack him with um, your your 6K, or you can also do your well if you think you're just gonna stand there, they do 4-4-A hold. The 4-6-A plus G command throw is not really anything special; it just deals 56 damage and just leaves the opponent right there. And now for Astaroth's main two command throws that you're probably going to be utilizing the most is 236A plus G, the backbreaker, and a 214A plus G launcher throw. If you hit this one, always follow up with a uh, 22B, and then right there you can end up getting a bit of a combo off of it. Right there, you get like solid damage, like over 75 damage. The two command throws also have the ability to hold down the input. And you turn it into an unblockable guard brick, even though I'm not sure really what a guard break throw exactly is like. But just know that if you can get off the fully charged version, it's unbreakable. Same for 214A plus G. So you get an unbreakable launcher throw that deals 81 damage. To top this off, 
the 236 and 214 A plus G command throws can also be just for input. It's a very tight input though, Take that, keep that in mind. Try to press the A plus G on the same time as the third direction. You get increased damage. Being a grappler like character, Astroff has more throw range than pretty much like any other character, so he can outrange well, pretty much any character with his throw range, which can be really handy. Like, you can almost throw characters from mid range. Alright, keep note that that's just his standard throw range, but he also has uh, command throws such as the 236 A plus G or 214 A plus G. See, that has slightly longer range, and then you have your. Your 6-4 or 4-6 A plus G. These ones have like really large throw. They have even longer throw range than your 2-3-6 or 2-1-4 throw range. And to go along with all this, Astroth also has armored throws such as 6-6 A plus G. Or 4-4 A plus G. You basically just go across the screen. Alright, with that one there, 4-4 A plus G. If you press the B button at the right time and hold it down, you can get increased damage with that guard break. And if the opponent thinks that they can crouch under your armor throws, after your 6-6-A, just hold down. They're never safe. Same with 4-4-A plus G. Actually, while we're at it, Astrov's basically like a DOA character. He has crouch throws. 2-A plus G? Where a lot of these throws look like they just break the opponent's teeth. Or the alternate is 1A plus G. Take note with any, any of these throws, whether it be crouch throws, stand in throws, any throw that either uses um, like A plus G or like forward A plus G, these ones are broken by just pressing, well, any button and any direction other than back. Any throw that either uses like back A plus G or like, well, 1A plus G or anything like that or 4A plus G, then you'd break it with back. Plus A plus G. So that's basically, there's only two throw breaks even for all of these command throws. The only exception, of course, is if a throw is unbreakable. And of course, Astaroth's throws are also really good at bringing out the opponent. Any throw that tends to knock the opponent forward will generally bring out the opponent, such as right there is 2A plus G. And throws that switch sides with the opponent tend to ring out behind Astroth, so yeah, you generally don't want to get thrown by Astroth if you're close to the ring edge. He can also step on the opponent if he's behind them. To go along with all this, Astroth also has ground throws. So if you were to ground the opponent with something such as 4-4-B, then do 3-A plus G, and then you reset the opponent again. This is quite similar to if you hit them with the 6-4-A plus G, and you get this, then you get the stand and reset. And what that means is you can do the Go for the same Fisher Price mix up of either if they push a button and hit them with uh, 6k, and if they don't hit a. Oh, come on. And if they don't hit a button, then you hit them with 44A charge. And also, since Astaroth is essentially a DOA character, anytime you do get a, a knockdown and put the opponent into a reset situation, you always have an opportunity to just simply go for a throw. I like the launcher throw. There's something you should know with regards to facing against Astra. So anytime the opponent is put into a situation where they may have to deal with a throw, the go-to thing for them to do is simply to duck under the throw. So that means that you need to discourage the opponent from wanting to duck. So anytime when you think the opponent may try and duck, then this is where 4B comes into play. You can just do a normal 4B or you can charge it for a really good break attack. You can also launch the opponent with 3B, then perform an air grab with A plus G. The air grab is really good for ringing out the opponent. And from the other side too, if you use the 4 A plus G throw. And if the opponent ends up jumping at you for any reason, then just snatch him out of the air with 2 8 A plus G. Remember, if you like this video, smash that like button. If you like this video, just hit the like button anyway, and don't forget to subscribe for more juicy fighting game content. I also would like to take this moment to thank my premium top tier fighters for their continued support, which I always do appreciate. If you'd like to become a premium top tier fighter yourself, click on the Patreon link down below.
Ashroff is not a close range fighter, so if possible, don't fight in close range with him. Although this is Soul Calibur and the fast characters will eventually get on you anyway. Alright, so what you can use to try and poke your opponent with this stuff like his K or his 4A. His 4A is a really good poke. If the opponent gets hit by the second hit, then it drags him in for a free low throw attempt. As an added benefit to 4AA, if this move gets blocked, it leaves you at plus 4 and you can even charge the second hit to leave yourself at plus 8, though it is also, well, high high. Your go-to mid in close range will be 3k, comes out fast at 14 frames, forces crouch, and if this move gets blocked, it leaves you safe at minus 8. A go-to move that you can use in close range to create a bit of space is 4ka. This move goes mid-high and the second hit is horizontal and is advantage on block if I'm not mistaken. If you think that the opponent might crouch under the second hit, then you can just simply just do a 4k, or you can do 4k hold, then you end up getting a mid hit that ends up creating a lot of space and keeps you fully safe. Your go to high crushes in close range can include, well, your bull rush 66k. This move, of course, can be fully charged to become a powerful launcher. Other high crushes you can use include your 1k, which has a fall up in 1k A, although the second hit is a high, so a lot of times you're just going to use just the 1k. You can also ground the opponent with moves such as. 1B, which has the ability to be held down for a different hit status. A good go-to while standing move is while rising B right here. It has the ability to be charged up for a guard break. Anytime you have advantage over your opponent in close range, your go-to mid will be 4K. The reason why is if you hold it down, you get a really good break attack, just like A plus B. And headbutting people is just pretty damn addictive. Now, at mid to long range, this is where you want to be with Astroth. You get a lot more variety in the kind of moves you can do. For instance, you can do a B, you can do an A, you can do AA, AB, BA, like you kind of get the idea. Alright, so generally your go-to just basically mid control, as in like control in the space in front of you move, is your 4-4-A. Again, whether just to just releasing it, or when you have the opponent on the defensive, holding it down. This is a really good move. And of course, when it hits the opponent, well, when it knocks the opponent down, see, it ends up creating space. That's just, that's generally what you want to do with Astaroth. So your go-to mids will be just simply doing a B or 4-4-A. Four, four, For a go-to low, just simply your 2-A. I'll just let you know that it's a real low because it's really slow at like 20 frames. It's not a special low, so, I mean, so this is basically a mid-range low poke for you. And your go-to high will be 6-A right here. Alright, as you see, if this connects on counter hit, it drags the opponent in, that means free low throw attempt. When you're at long range, and then if you want to just keep keep the opponent away, then you have either 2A plus B or the reverse, which is 8A plus B. See right here, this covers a lot of space. It's generally a hard move to punish if you're doing it around tip ranges, it just covers so much distance. And another good spacing tool that I like is of course the two the 1177. B right here. Alright, that's 4-4-B, four, four, but with this move though, I mean, you can use it for space control. You can even use it as kind of a get-in move if you use the K, which ends up leading into the bull rush. And if the opponent's a bit off balance, you can sparingly also use 4-4-B. Four, four, again, it's like a typical kind of unblockable that can be cancelled, but again, it covers a lot of distance. It's, it's good when it's hit, and again, it's not really... It's not really that heavily punishable unless you make it like really obvious when you're doing it. At long range, your low poke will be 1A. But again, like most Astaroth moves, this move also is kind of slow. So one thing you need to be a bit careful with Astaroth is just kind of telegraphing your moves because he doesn't really have any fast moves. But with this move, well, it's a long track and low. If you hold it down, you get a stronger hit status, but then it also gains fall-ups in 1, 1A A or 1A B, which is a plus on block guard break. As for getting moves, you can, well, use your bull rush, 66k, 
whether you do the uncharged version or the fully charged version, you're, you're safe on block either way. And as you see, if you actually hit that from a bit of range, so around tip range, and it causes a lethal hit on your opponent. Other moves that you can use as a bit of a get-in move is also his... His 3k is okay from mid-range, so you can use this either in close range or mid-range. As you see, it takes a big authoritative step forward. And again, it comes out, I mean, it's a fast move, it comes out of four, in 14 frames, so this is a good move. It's safe while blocked, and of course, it's good when it hits the opponent, so, I mean, use your feet. Your go-to whiff punisher with Astroth will be his 6-6-B right here. See, it says it's a special mid. It's just a good, fast, deceptive ranged poke where you just, looks like you're just smacking the opponent in the face, get decent damage, 32, so 6-6-B is a good move. And of course, if the opponents do a lot of linear moves, then 2-2-B is just a pretty amazing move. I mean, it, I mean, you deal over 60 damage just for a, a single hit every time you hit them with 2-2-B. If the opponent's being a bit hesitant to try and get it on you or to just try and hover around like footsie range or anything like that, then you can try and sneak in the 2-2-K hold. See right here, it's a special quake low right here. It ends up, um, well, he ends up stunning the opponent and gives you an opportunity to try and get like a follow-up attack. For instance, what you can do is like do this, then use it as an opportunity to try and sneak in a 4-4-A um, break attack. And if you want to style on your opponent a bit, use this get and move on them. Quarter circle back, AAA, repeated. Yes, that's all a natural combo. If you manage to connect this in close range, it turns into a massive hit throw. Holy crap, that's a lot of damage. Astroth is a big ass dude with a big ass weapon, so basically almost anything you do is gonna run up the guard gauge, well, pretty well. For instance, 4-4-A is fine whether you charge it or not. Hell, even just ramming your body into your opponent with a bull rush runs it up well, whether it's uncharged or not, either is fine. 3k does it decently. 4b is good. 2-2-B is good. A plus B is good, and of course... For any of you metalheads out there, have a lot of fun with 4B. So basically, if the opponent blocks almost anything, it runs up the guard gauge really well. Even this move here, 1-1-B one, one right here, runs it up really well. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm probably, like, probably missing some others. Like, 1-A is okay. Like, if you do these moves around tip range, they're also harder to... They're also harder to punish for most characters due to pushback and just being so far away. With regards to breaking the opponent's guard and causing a guard burst, 6-6-B is really good at doing that. It's just like a fast, unreactable move. Other moves you can use is like 3-B. Although take note that moves like 4-4-A actually don't break the guard because you need generally strong, well, usually strong verticals. So a good go-to really is just 6-6-B. After you break the opponent's guard, fall up with 6-B, 2-2-K, 2-2-B. When you have the opponent at the walls, Azeroth, you can wall slam him with 4k A. Or you can use your bull rush. Now we're going to take a look at Astaroth's soul charged based moves. Alright, his soul attack, so 236 A plus B plus K, is a pretty standard vertical soul attack move. If you end up holding it down, then it becomes an armored revenge attack. As for Astaroth's actual soul charge state, his soul charge moves just simply tend to complement his general hard hitting playstyle. For instance, he can do stuff like. 1AA without having to charge it up, and of course the vertical 1AB, you get the brick attack. Other stuff like 4AA, again, you don't have to charge up the second hit. BB becomes a launcher. If you hold down the second hit, you get an unblockable for instance. The already amazing 6B becomes an armored revenge move while under soul charge. The already amazing spinner rooney move actually can be followed up after soul charge 6B with 6B A repeated which makes this spin, spin and move even more ridiculous. And just for good measure, with Soul Charge 6BB, you get a guard brick because, well, is there anything that Soul Charge 6B can't do? Go. 
And before I forget, if you hold down 6B, it becomes a combo starter. As an Astaroth player, you're likely gonna like headbutts. So in Soul Charge, you get a better headbutt with 4BB. You get the break attack basically for free. Hell, if you hold down the second hit, you get an unblockable now because why not? Flame in head. 4KA gets to be better, it gets to be an armored attack. So essentially, Astaroth can become quite abusable in this Soul Charge by just Get it, given the more buttons you can chuck out since they're armored attacks. 4B books K becomes an armored low. Soul Charge 2-2B becomes a launcher. The Bull Rush becomes an armored move and gains a second hit. The two armored throw, 6-6-A plus G or 4-4-A plus G, get a bit of a damage buff. Actually, a bunch of Astroth's throws gets buffs in Soul Chart, such as 214A plus G. That's pretty disgusting damage for one throw. 236A plus G, A plus G, is also a pretty powerful throw. Thank you for joining me on this virtuous Astroth journey. Remember, if you like this video, smash that like button. If you didn't like this video, just hit the like button even harder. And don't forget to subscribe for more juicy fighting game content. In particular, I have Soul Calibur guides for majority of the cast now, and I also have a few Soul Calibur tutorials to help you out with your Soul Calibur journey. This video is endorsed by Smart Esports and Trollcoin, and I also want to take this moment to thank my premium top tier fighters for their continued support, which I always do appreciate. If you'd like to become a premium top tier fighter yourself, click on the Patreon link down below. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact me on my YouTube, Twitter, or Twitch. You can also contact Force Nature on 8 Way Run. Anyways, this is Force Nature signing off. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Top Tier Tips.